it is June 14th. Uh, John Cunningham, um, happy birthday. It's awesome. I wish we were there to, to celebrate with you, but happy birthday, John. May this be an awesome year for you. And great news, Jim, Lord willing, regular room today. Uh, God is working. God is good. God is faithful. You know, we go through things in this world, but God is preparing awesome things in the world to come for us. So, you've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That is where true victory is found. When you are in right relationship with God Almighty, it can bring a calmness and a peace that this world can't understand. You know, just to think that God the Father, the one who holds everything in perfect order, loves you so, so much. He made you so special. There is no one like you. No one else has your fingerprint, your DNA. You're special. You are created by God. You're created in the image of God. He has good things for you. But it's up to us whether we accept that gift of God. If we accept Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of our life, and I do mean Lord and Savior. It's not just believing it in your head, but it's in your heart. Knowing that He is who He says He is. He died, yes, an awful death for us on Calvary that our sins could be forgiven. But He rose again on the third day. And because of that, we are victorious. I am going to start in the Old Testament in Psalms 1. And then we're going to switch real quick to the New Testament. Psalms 1. This is to the believer in Jesus Christ. This is to the one who's given his life to God. This is what it says in Psalms 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight. Where is the delight of the person who's trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. It's in the word of God, in wanting to please the Lord. It says his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. There's seasons in our life for different things to be come forth. We have to just be patient for God's timing. He knows what's perfect. It says, that brings forth, fruit, forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. The, the, the shaft on the weed that just flies away, goes to nothing. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. The day when we stand before the Lord for our rewards, for the good things, the the ungodly will not be there. It says, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. There will be no sinners in the congregation of righteous. It says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. With that in thought, I'm going to jump now to Romans 6. Romans 6 says this. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can he who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ raised from the dead by the glory of the Father we too might walk in the newness of life. Now I was thinking how much the word Father is in the New Testament. You know, God the Father so loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That God there, it's talking about 
God the Father loves you, loves me so dearly. He says, We were buried, therefore, with him by the death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. When we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we can walk in newness of life. We are born again. That's where that statement comes in. God gives us a clean slate to start afresh. People might remember the old things. We might remember the old things. But they are no longer hold us bound. We have been set free. Just as Christ was crucified on the cross, um, that our sins and everything were crucified with that. That dead bury, body that was buried, you know what? Our sins were buried. The word says as far as the east is from the west, they're gone. When we ask for forgiveness, they are gone. It goes on and says, For if we have been united with him in death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Just as he rose from the dead, we too one day, they may bury this body. It may get cremated. Whatever may happen to it, it doesn't matter. We will be raised just like Christ was raised in our glorified bodies. It says, we know that our old self was crucified with him or in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. So that, here we go, we no longer be enslaved to sin. When you've been born again, you are no longer enslaved to sin. You now have the power of God Almighty, the Holy Spirit living within you. That Holy Spirit gives you power over sin. It might try to build a nest in you. You know, like we talk about the birds building a nest on your head. <laughs> but you know what? You have the power and the authority to say, nope, you're not going to do it and say no to that sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So that you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And I, I like this. This is important. Let not sin. We have the free will, okay, to, to do what we want. And it says here, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Say no to that sin. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. But instead of doing that, present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no more dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish with 1 Peter 1, talking about our heavenly inheritance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God, that Holy Spirit within you, kept by the power of God through faith for the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, although now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Praise God. So we can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I was thinking of the old song, 
When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. We are victorious in Jesus Christ. Keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a blessed day.